For my thoughts on all the latest happenings in the NFL in a completely relaxed, unscripted format, be sure to check out my channel, JG9 News. And now, on with our feature presentation. I don't know about you, but it seems like every year, there's some sort of controversy involving Buffalo when it comes to the weather and snow and playing games there. If there's ever a team where, if they're on the calendar and it's late in the season, you can't actually guarantee that the game will be held there or on that date, it's Buffalo. Combine being up north where it snows and gets cold with being right on Lake Erie, and you're going to get brutal weather and just cross your fingers and hope that nothing bad happens, and that logistically speaking, the game can happen. This past postseason, the Buffalo Bills played the Pittsburgh Steelers in the wildcard round. The game was supposed to take place on a Sunday at 1 o'clock Eastern, as in, a very standard time for playoff games to start. However, due to a state of emergency being issued, due to snow and high winds, and due to the roads being unsafe and it being flat out dangerous for people to be out of the house and traveling, especially drunk people at a football game where their cars would be buried in the parking lots afterwards, the game got moved to a Monday afternoon, taking place on Martin Luther King Day in what was the first Monday afternoon playoff game since 1988, when they intentionally played games there to avoid playing on Christmas. This was the first playoff game to ever move dates for an unintended reason, and you can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. And that wasn't even the only time this happened. Back in 2022, the Buffalo Bills were set to take on the Cleveland Browns in Orchard Park during Week 11. Absolutely monumental game for the Bills, seeing as they were half a game back of the Miami Dolphins and tied with the New York Jets with a 6-3 record in the ultra-competitive AFC East. However, if Bills fans wanted to watch this game live and in person to cheer their team on, they couldn't do it in Buffalo, but rather, they had to do it a few states over in Michigan, because the game was moved to Detroit. There were projections that estimated that more than four feet of snow would hit Buffalo, making it impossible for people to travel to and from the stadium safely, and once again, making it unsafe for anyone to be on the roads. The Bills ended up winning the game as the de facto home team, despite the fact that the game was played in Michigan and not New York. Said the NFL in a statement put out 72 hours before kickoff, due to public safety concerns, and out of an abundance of caution in light of the ongoing weather emergency in western New York, Sunday's Cleveland Browns Buffalo Bills game will be moved to Ford Field in Detroit. The decision to move the game from Highmark Stadium in Orchard Park was done in consultation with the Buffalo Bills and local and state authorities as the region prepares for the storm. And what's crazy is that this wasn't even the first time that a Bills game got moved to Detroit due to bad weather. Back in 2014, the Buffalo Bills were set to take on the New York Jets in an AFC East rivalry. The Jets were out of it, sitting dead last in the division with a 2-8 record. But for the Bills, who were 5-5 and and right in the thick of things in the AFC, seeing as 13 of the 16 teams in the conference were at or above 500, it was a big game. However, 72 hours before the game was initially set to take place, the game was moved out of Buffalo and to Detroit being played on a Monday night instead. Due to projected snowfall of six feet, officials felt it would be unwise to play the game in Buffalo, seeing as it would be impossible to travel to the stadium, the roads would be a mess, and public resources should be devoted elsewhere. Said Bills President Russ Brandon, it is not practical to play a game in Orchard Park in the conditions that our community was in. The game was moved to Michigan, where the Bills won, so the Bills are 3-0 games that get moved due to weather-related reasons, so I guess they need to keep doing that. That seems to be the winning formula. Now, that's not to say that snow games are never played in Buffalo, as that couldn't be further from the truth. We saw the Bills-Colts overtime snow game in 2017, and we saw multiple Bills games in the 21st century against the Dolphins take place in the wintry weather, taking place in 2002 and 2022. But one of my favorite things to hear from people is that when the game gets moved, that it's because people are soft. That society is soft. They could have absolutely played the game, but that's just the way it is. People are just soft. Back in my day, 
they would have played the game in the snow and wouldn't have thought twice about it. You would drive to the venue in the snow. You would suck it up and bundle up once you're outside. And you wouldn't let Mother Nature interfere with how you enjoyed football. Football is meant to be played in the elements. You're not playing the game in the elements? That wasn't how we did it back then. Heck, there were many people who absolutely thought that when the Bill Steelers team got moved a month ago. And my response to that is... Are you sure about that? Are you really sure about that? Because back in the day when you were traveling uphill both ways and walking five miles to school, the NFL did the exact same thing. Because back in 1924, a controversy erupted that you probably have no idea about involving a different team right on Lake Erie, when the Akron Pros were set to face the Rochester Jeffersons. And this is the story behind what might just be considering the circumstances, the craziest snow game in NFL history. Now, before I go any further with this one, as you might be able to expect, because we're talking about a game from the 1920s that took place a century ago, there's not going to be a whole lot of footage. We're relying a lot on still images for the rest of this video. Again, I apologize for that in advance. I never like showing still images. It feels very PowerPoint-like, but it's the only real avenue I have. Much like the video I did a few weeks ago on Frank Coughlin, the coach from the 1920s who got fired in the middle of the game, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. There's no real footage of anything from the 1920s, let alone something as specific as this, so this is really the only way I can do it. On top of that, you might notice there are no helmets behind me of the two teams playing in the scheme, the Akron Pros and the Rochester Jeffersons, and that's because, well... I own a lot of helmets, but I don't own any from those two teams, nor do they make from those two teams. So, take that as you will. Before I talk about the actual game in question, we need some context to understand the importance of this game. It's November 30th, 1924, and we've got a battle on our hands in Akron, Ohio, between the Akron Pros and the Rochester Jeffersons. In terms of the standings, this scheme means nothing. There is no NFL draft order to be determined as the draft did not exist. There is no postseason or championship game, so whichever team has the highest winning percentage at the end of the season claims the title, which definitely was not even the slightest bit controversial, as we would learn one year later in 1925. And even if there was, Akron and Rochester weren't going to do anything. Akron was abysmal, as after a 1-6 season in 1923, they followed it up with a 2-6 campaign in 1924, having lost six of their last seven games entering this one. The good news for Akron, though, was that one of those wins came against this team right here, the Rochester Jeffersons, who they beat 3-0 earlier in the season. Rochester was abysmal. They entered this game with an 0-7 record, having been outscored 156-7 across their seven games. You could probably make a legitimate argument when you get outscored 156-7 that you're the worst NFL team of all time. Rochester hadn't won a game since 1921 and had lost 15 straight over the last three seasons. But in those 15, the closest they came was that 3-0 defeat to Akron, which was the only time they kept it within one score. In that sense, this was a big game for the Jeffersons because not only was it their last chance to get a win, but it was their best chance in a long time. And this game was going to take place on November 30th, no doubt about it. It was taking place on Sunday, just as football was intended. Said one writer from the Dayton Herald, Sunday's argument should be a merry battle. I'm not sure I'd describe a game between a 2-6 and six team and an 0-7 team as a merry battle, but whatever floats your boat. Then again, this man described this game as a title fight, so I'm not sure this man actually paid any attention to the NFL at all. Even as further proof, on November 30th, the day of the game, the Pittsburgh Post put out a schedule of all the football games across every league taking place across the country and in the region, with the NFL games near the bottom. Sure enough, you can see it right there. Rochester at Akron. So let's just make that very clear right now. The game was on as scheduled, and even the day of the game, people woke up and expected to watch a football game if they lived in Akron, or expected to read about it in the paper the following day. 
As for the weather for the game between the Akron Crows and the Rochester Jeffersons, it was not supposed to be that bad. Like I talked about at the top of the video with the Buffalo Bills, another team that plays on Lake Erie, when they moved their games, they had ample notice that the weather was going to be an absolute mess. They knew that snow was coming into the area, and they knew that things could potentially go haywire and it would be unsafe many days in advance. But here, as you're about to find out, this seemed like it was going to be pretty normal football weather. Not great weather by any means. Definitely don't want to play in it. Definitely don't want to watch a game in it. But pretty normal football weather. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Even on the day of the game, when people got their newspapers and saw the weather report, they saw a report that didn't look too bad. It was going to be a lot of rain, but the temperatures were going to be fine and probably wouldn't dip to anything resembling snow. But there are some days where the weather may get it completely wrong. And there are some days where the forecast is about as accurate as Tim Tebow throwing a football. And this was one of those days. Because when people awoke on Sunday, they found Akron depicted like this. Covered in snow. Lots and lots of snow. In that 24 hour period on Sunday, the University of Akron measured five and a half inches hitting the city making this the first snowfall of the year. And even though Akron getting snow isn't anything unusual, seeing as it is a northern city right by one of the Great Lakes and it was past Thanksgiving, that didn't mean that the storm didn't cause some damage. It was estimated that even though 12 accidents were reported by the police, that over 40 accidents occurred on this day alone. You might be saying, wait a second, 40 accidents? That doesn't sound like a lot. Well, I want to put that number into perspective. Four months before, on the weekend of July 26 to 27, Akron reported four accidents total, so an average of two per day. And here, we had 40, or 20 times the daily average not even a few months before. So it was definitely not safe to drive, and the weather shut everything down, especially because officials didn't have time to salt the roads, due to the unexpected nature of the snow coming down. And with that, the game was going to be off for the day. The weather is too bad, the roads are too much of a mess, and it just wouldn't be safe to play the game, especially seeing as Western New York, where the Jeffersons were traveling from, was also going to get hit with lots of snow. So that raises the obvious question. When would the game in this city right here that you've been looking at get moved to? Well, here's the funny part. November 30th was the final day of the league year. There were no more games on the schedule after that. Back then, players were not pro players year-round. The money was not there in professional sports, especially in pro football. People had jobs in the offseason, and even had jobs during the season in some cases. It wouldn't be feasible to play the game on a different date because there was the expectation that once the season was done, that was it, and they'd move on to their other job, which was making them more money. Number two, the game meant absolutely nothing in the standings as we've already established. There were no playoffs, and even if there were, it's not like Akron or Rochester would have made it, seeing as Akron was 2-6 and six, and Rochester was 0-7. Number three, the league organization was extremely flimsy back then. There was no set schedule. Teams could play as many or as few games as they wanted. The Frankfurt Yellow Jackets ended the season playing 14 games, while the Hatton Pros ended the season playing 5 games. So it's not like the decision to play or not play the game would have impacted anything a whole lot. And number 4, the money was not there in the NFL with a lot of teams back then, especially this team right here the road team, the Jeffersons. Teams were falling left, right, and center. Why spend the money to rent out the facility, to pay the players, to travel, and to put on the game when most of these teams were hanging on by a thread anyways, when some of these teams were folding mid-season anyways, and when the game doesn't matter? If a team plays one less skin today than everyone else, that's millions upon millions of dollars they're losing in ticket sales, in TV revenue, and everything along those lines. But back in 1924, some of these teams actually gained money by not playing because they were operating at a loss, including the Jeffersons. Owner Leo Lyons reportedly worked overnight at a phone company 
just to finance the team and to allow the team to play games in Ohio, since it was a bit of a hike, he would pay for everything, including the players' salaries to allow them to take off of work. In other words, it was not feasible whatsoever for this game to take place under these conditions and to have the game get rescheduled. And when you factor all of that in, as you might have been able to tell, yeah, this game never happened in this city. It was called off. Ackley would finish the season 2 and 6, and Rochester would finish the season winless, with no chance to get their first win. The NFL did not make them replay the game. And what's insane, and shows you just how far we've come in so many ways from a coverage standpoint, from a news standpoint, and from a league standpoint, is this. Do you want to know how many articles I found about the supposed NFL game in the city covered in snow? Akron? Do you want to know how many articles I found about the game getting called off and not happening? None! Zero! Zilch! Nada! It was just a thing that happened. The game got called off, and no one got an eye. It was not reported in a single newspaper. There are only a few reasons we know that the game got called off due to weather. Number one... An article in the Applin Beacon Journal titled, Sunday Snowstorm Spoils Many Outdoor Sports, was published the day after the game was supposed to be played. Pretty much tells you everything you need to know, even though it mentioned nothing about the pros Jefferson's game. Number two, this happened to other sports nearby, including an amateur league in Dayton, where the field was covered with snow. And number three, it even happened elsewhere in the NFL. Because we'll talk later on about a game between the Cleveland Bulldogs and Buffalo Bisons that got cancelled for the same reasons, with the reason for that being blinding snow. So we can only assume based off of all the evidence put together that this was the reason for the cancellation with the Akron Rochester game. But there was not one article or mention of it directly. It's moments like this where I absolutely love studying the history of the game and the weird and wacky stories behind it, especially the 1920s. Because I really want you to imagine this. Back then, a game got cancelled and nobody said a peep! No one said a word about it! Today, a player so much as breathes and it gets a story. Every move, everything a player does, every transaction, we analyze it like crazy, it's talked about, it's reported on. Back in 1924, a century ago, the way the news worked, the way the media worked, and the way that the game was covered and the popularity of it, a game got cancelled and no one talked about it. It was just a thing that happened mysteriously. Unbelievable. Can you imagine that happening today? Honestly, can you imagine something like that happening today? Because I surely can't. The Jeffersons would fold after the 1925 season which was another winless campaign for them where they went 0-6-1. And that season, the Jeffersons did not play the pros, so the last ever meeting between the two teams was earlier in 1924, and not to end the 1924 season. So we never got that closure between the two teams. But the next time you think to yourself that the NFL is soft for not playing a game in the snow, and that they used to play games in all the elements, regardless of what the roads were like, and regardless of the safety of the players and the fans, just remember that this is complete revisionist history. And think of this city right here. Because back in 1924, instead of watching the pros, Akron residents were watching the snow. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9 p.m. Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of college football, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.